Hey everybody and welcome to uh, brewery build day number two. Um, today's going to be brown of the work. It's really only going to be a two three day process. I already put one video up. Um, I've got all of the parts in and I've already started doing some of the work. Um, the only thing I'm waiting on is the panel and the heating element which was supposed to be here today but there was a little bit of delay. Sorry about the shakiness in delivery. So uh, uh, apparently that'll be here tomorrow. But anyway, let's take a look at what we're working on here and uh, hopefully we can break this down uh, step by step and you'll see the whole build and I'll put this out in one video. Hence why I didn't do a homebrew Wednesday the other day because I'm busy doing this. Cheers. So, so here's the cart that I am uh, putting everything on. It just snaps together. You know, you can adjust the shelves however you want with these little plastic couplers that go around the tubes and then uh, the shelves itself put pressure on and you seal them up. I made it so there's enough room for my fermenters there on the bottom, uh, just so, you know, when I'm brewing, I can wheel them over to where they'll sit for fermentation in the closet there. And then there's enough room for, you know, spoons and siphons and everything else to sit underneath there, and the pump's also going to monitor there. And that's what we're going to do next. All right, so here's the pump. I removed the pump head assembly. Originally, I was going to hang it under here. But as you can see, there's a little bit of a lip here on the bottom. And I can't quite get it up to where it needs to be. So there's another reason I removed the pump head. I'm actually just going to flip the pump over. And I'll have it right there on the edge. And then I'm using these little metal brackets to uh, hold it in place with some uh, bolts and nuts. So I'm going to get that put on and we'll take a look at that. Alright, so now we got the pump all mounted. As you can just see, I just took a couple, uh, I think those are three quarter inch by half inch bolts through the bottom and then use those brackets just to hold it to that one wire. It's just got to hold it in place, tighten them down pretty tight with some three eighths inch nuts on the back side. And I also reversed the pump head again, uh, but now that's all set. Next I'm going to put the kettles up and start lining them up and marking them for drilling. Alright, so I got the two kettles sitting up here with the pump. I'm gonna get this other fermenter out of the way. Just, I gotta clean them. They got a little dirty. So I'm gonna clean them up real good here. But uh, we got all that. There's some holes sitting on the floor. But over here, more importantly, we got the false bottom that works for 36 and 44 quart Bayou Classics. Um, at first, I didn't think it would fit because of this lip in the top, but you can squeeze it in there. And I will show you how. What I'm going to do next, see how we got, actually I'll show you right now, we got that flat edge there. All you have to do is hold it sideways. And it will flip right in and then I can turn it and lay it down. And then it just adjusts with that wing nut so you can make a perfect circle. But I got to measure, oh that's going to be in trouble. I got to measure this so I can make sure that my valve is below the, uh, below the, uh, the false bottom here. So I'm going to measure up the kettles and I'm going to get them ready for drilling. That's next. Alright, so I got the two kettles laying on their side uh, just because I want the valves in the same area. So what I did is I went ahead and I measured the stand here for the false bottom and it's exactly two inches. Knowing that, then I came over to my kettle here and I measured an inch up um, let's see here, focus, sorry there's a little glare, but anyway, I measured about an inch up the center, uh, and then just had to adjust it a little bit to make it look right, and then I took the washer from the weldless valve, here, sorry about the glare, and I put it on there, and drew a circle, so that's approximately how big the, uh, hole has to be and I did that on both kettles so they're both ready for uh, drilling for the valves uh, I'm gonna get those done I'm gonna mark a couple more holes and uh, then I'm gonna go outside and we'll do all the drilling in one go alright guys welcome back uh, just prepping one more thing here before I go out and uh, start drilling because I want to take both kettles out and drill those at the same time but I'm also gonna drill some holes in the lid for some compression fittings in one of the lids for my uh, HLT coil. Now all this is, is my old work chiller I'm reusing. I actually only used it once and uh, 
now I'm going to use it as a combo um, heat exchanger and I'm also going to use it for uh, chilling the wort as well. And I'll show you how I plan on doing that in the uh, first brew day on this thing, but uh, I'm just going to take a handy dandy little tubing pipe cutter and I'm going to cut both ends off of here because as you can see they use these uh, they use these uh, Oh, what the hell they call those? Anyway, they use these uh, connectors here that don't uh, come off without cutting them. I don't have a tool. So it's just a little bit easier to slip that on there and cut through it. And uh, also that way I can make sure they're the same length. And then uh, we'll head outside and start drilling. All right, we've stepped outside here to do the drilling. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want metal shavings in the house. And I can get them rid of them easier out here. I also brought out everything that I'm going to need to make sure that measure the hole as you're cutting. That way... Uh, you know you can make sure you get just the perfect fit so I got one of my ball valves out here that's the uh, compression fitting for the lid uh, there's a file that way I can remove any of the burr that's left from drilling I got my cordless drill out here with a step bit on it uh, the nice thing about this step bit is it's got the measurements for each step in there so you can kind of watch as you go and also mark them and it's important when you're doing this to use a low speed high torque that way you don't uh, um, work hard in the steel and then always a lubricant for the bill or the uh, drill so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a, I'm going to lubricate everything up I'm going to start with the lid and uh, unfortunately I can't film this and do it at the same time and my wife's busy getting ready so we lubricate I'll do a couple steps and I think at that point it'll be ready to measure it I'll double check it and uh, we'll be right back this may be difficult to see, but you can see it's kind of dented right there. I made two small little center punches uh, with my hammer and uh, my file actually had to came to a nice point just to help keep the uh, drill bit from walking. I'm going to start drilling this out now and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Alright, so I've gotten one hole drilled and uh, as you can see, this compression fitting just wiggles in there perfectly. And that's what we're going for. So I'm going to drill the other hole. And then uh, that's it for this kettle, or the lid. And then I'll show you what we got with the kettle. Similar process. So as you guys saw, I just uh, finished up with the lid. Uh, went real well. That was kind of my, my test. I figured I'd do my first drilling on the lid. Uh, takes quite a bit of pressure, but as soon as you get that initial hole, it goes real quick. And then uh, a little trick I learned, uh, just to help remove the burr so you don't necessarily have to file is uh, on your like last step that you have to do on the step bit um, with the kettles go on the inside so drill from the back side and it'll remove that burr and then at that point just keep fitting it and uh, drilling a little bit until you get the fit you want uh, I'm gonna get started on this first kettle here let's see I gotta drill two holes in this one this is the HLT or I'm sorry this is the mash ton so we're gonna get that drilled and uh, I'll drill both of them and uh, there's better videos on drilling out holes. I'm not going to go into detail on it, but take your time, uh, lubricate, and then every couple steps let the bit sit and cool down. That way you don't overheat it and you don't overstress anything. So I'm going to get this knocked out, and uh, we'll see you guys back in the basement putting it all together. Cheers. All right, so we're still drilling. It's actually day two. I uh, had some family come in from out of state last night, so I went and had dinner from them, and then some friends came over and hung out. Um, one thing I did want to show you, while drilling just a little trick is to actually uh, about one or two steps before you're done uh, actually switch and go to the inside of your kettle and it'll help remove the burr and actually even everything out real nicely so uh, I'll show you what that looks like and then uh, the other good thing about it being a day later is the element came in and so did the control panel and we'll take a look at that in the next video when I'm putting everything together so uh, I'm going to show you drilling the inside, and that'll be it for this video. I'm going to finish drilling the holes and uh, get moved inside. All Here right, we go. Sorry about the echo, but as you can see, this is inside the kettle. You get a little bit of a burr on there from uh, from the bit coming through. So to remove that, all you want to have to do, sorry, take your drill on the inside and get it in there, and it's a little bit tough to do if your drill's big mine barely fits in here and then that'll remove that and also uh, as you can see that was just 
nice. I was barely even putting any pressure on there, and it already took some of it off. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'll do that with all the holes, and uh, we'll finish this project up for the day.